Welcome everybody to our Thursday science call today. We are going to be talking all about the epidemic of caffeine addiction. I have one of our amazing Platinums, Greg Larson, here to chat with me. He shared his story a few weeks ago in California on stage, and I was so blown away with the transformation that he has been through since starting on Amari's products, and specifically as it relates to how he has changed his relationship with caffeine. So we're going to bring Greg on in a few minutes after I cover some of the basics about what is caffeine, how does it work, all of the things. And so um, if you don't know me, my name is Dr. Lindsay Elmore. I have a I have a bachelor's in chemistry. I have a doctorate in pharmacy. I left the practice of pharmacy about eight, nine years ago because I realized that I was not helping people. And it really bummed me out that I was in a profession where I really wanted to pour my heart and soul into the care of people. And I felt like I was doing more harm than good. And so I took a hard left turn into natural wellness and have been studying supplements, herbs, um, and alternative healing modalities for since that time. And really, even since before then, I think my health journey is like a lot of people's journeys. You get on a health and wellness healing journey because you yourself are sick at baseline. And that was what happened to me is I tore my ACL. That led to me having some chronic insomnia, which led to me having chronic daytime fatigue, which just wore my brain out. And so I started searching for new things and found acupuncture, found chiropractor, um, eventually found um, just just so many layers of, of supplements that have helped me to heal. And now I have, you know, dove in to the world of Amare, which is all about prebiotic, probiotic, and phytobiotic supplements that help your, your gut brain access to communicate more effectively so that then your gut immune access, your gut heart access, your gut everything access can communicate more effectively because the healthier our gut is, the healthier that we are. Um, please debunk all about caffeine. Some people say it's good and others say that it's not. Well, you know, Sharon, you bring up really the, the starting point for what I wanted to start with. And so I am going to share some slides. If you guys ever struggle to see my slides changing, whatever, just put it in the chat. Um, I don't know what you can see. And sometimes I'll get halfway through a presentation and people will be like, we just saw nothing. So help me help you. If you're not seeing the correct um, information, just let me know. So we're talking about caffeine today, and we are also talking about making sure that we get everybody into the room as we go. All right, so let's talk about caffeine addiction. And when you think about what is caffeine, okay? Caffeine is a central nervous system stimulant. Like that's what it is. And it is the most classically, um, the most classic central nervous system stimulant um, because there aren't as many naturally occurring stimulants as there are, as there are some downers. We have some herbs, but by and large, caffeine is is like the head honcho when it comes to having central nervous system stimulation. So when you stimulate the central nervous system, this actually enhances our cognition. It helps us to think more clearly. It helps us to be more alert. It helps us to perform more complex tasks. And I, I want you to put this into perspective because the first time that I heard this, I was like, ouch, that's kind of harsh. And then I realized, no, no, that's just the truth. That's just the truth. Caffeine is the most widely used drug in the world. Caffeine meets every criteria for being a drug, every single last one. It is, it's active in the central nervous system, and therefore it is most certainly a drug. It crosses the blood brain barrier, absolutely no doubt, and it's very rapid acting. And you think about it, most of the time we think like, oh no, drugs are bad. I mean, Tibetan monks drink caffeine. Everybody under the sun, has anybody on this call 
Has anybody on this call never had one milligram of caffeine? I will be shocked if anybody says yes to that. I will be absolutely shocked. This is the most widely used drug in the world. It's given to children. It's given to elderly people. It's given to everyone. Literally everyone pretty much is using caffeine in some way, shape, or form. So how it works is it blocks the binding of adenosine to the adenosine one receptor, okay? So adenosine is a molecule that makes you feel more tired, okay? So here's the thing, caffeine's also a liar. You think that the caffeine is stimulating your brain, but what it is actually doing is having you have a reduced perception of tiredness so that it's not that you're actually any more like got any more pep in your step it's that you've blocked the ability of your body to process that you are tired okay this is why insomnia occurs with caffeine. It's not because your body is alert. It's because your body can't sense that it is tired. It also, when you block the ability of adenosine to bind the adenosine receptor, this also enhances the release of acetylcholine, which acetylcholine gives your body a lot of building blocks to work with. Like your choline can go into your cellular membranes, those acetal groups can attach all over different molecules. So it's building blocks for your body just to power and run on, okay? Caffeine also works on our um, cyclic AMP, and cyclic AMP is one of the ways that we generate energy. So it alters the way that our energy production processes um, work and function. So that is how caffeine works in the body, is that it makes it inhibits your ability to feel tired. It provides building blocks that you can use in lots of different chemical reactions, and it helps to improve some of our energy processes, okay? So that's how it works. And guess what, guys? It works, right? Caffeine works. It totally does. It's going to boost your energy. It's going to boost your metabolic rate. It's going to potentially improve your exercise performance. Um, in, in moderate amounts, it may even reduce the risk of heart disease. And I, as I was reading the research on that, I was like, is that because people are exercising more or because of the direct action of the caffeine, like on the cardiovascular system? Like, is it an acetylcholine kind of based process? We also know that it may relieve headaches. All right. So, I mean, over-the-counter medicines that are used to treat migraine headaches contain caffeine. It is a very, very common combination of, of acetaminophen and caffeine to relieve migraine headaches. But on the opposite side, how many of you have ever, ever had a caffeine-induced headache? Like where you're just like, why did I drink that third whatever? I mean, caffeine-induced headaches. So I, um, I don't, I don't know if I've shared this with you or I don't know if, how many of you is this your first time ever hearing me teach? Um, because I love that. Welcome. Um, so back in the day, I had bulimia really bad. Um, and it started when I was in about fourth grade because I had started my period in fourth grade. I didn't want to go to school when I was on my period. I figured out that if I could make myself throw up, I didn't have to go to school. It was a win-win all the way around until it turned into like a 10-year battle with bulimia. And during the worst of the worst, when I was in uh, late high school, early college, I was addicted to Diet Mountain Dew, and I think Bobby calls that the devil's piss, um, and so it is so nasty, and I would get these horrific headaches from caffeine, and so caffeine, yes, it can help with headaches, but it also can cause headaches as well. Caffeine interacts with multiple medications. It is going to mess with anxiety medications, antidepressants, any of your um, atypical antipsychotics, um, and, you know, anything that is the central nervous system acting and you pour caffeine on top of it, there are likely medication interactions there as well. It also is directly linked to new onset 
progressive and worsening anxiety. If you know someone with anxiety and they are saying, Hey, I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about, um, trying Amari's products, the number one thing that I want you to remind them of is if you truly want to relieve your anxiety, the number one thing you can do is eliminate all caffeine from your daily um, routine. Or at least we're going to look in a, in a moment about what does different caffeine consumption look like across the board. And so we can modulate our caffeine, use it's hard to say safer forms of caffeine because it's still the same caffeine molecule, but it's all the other stuff that's in with the caffeine. We'll talk about that in a minute. And last but not least, the risk of caffeine is addiction. I mean, caffeine is addictive, absolutely. And so how many people use caffeine, right? So how many people know what is the, the, the maximum daily allowance of caffeine, according to the FDA? What is the absolute maximum that we should be drinking on a daily basis? Type it in the chat. What do you think? Anybody know? Anybody know? All right, 200 milligrams, 30 milligrams. What else? How many milligrams? Anybody got another guess? 400. Yes, 400 is the absolute maximum that we are supposed to be that we are supposed to be using on a daily basis. Now, 400 milligrams, that's a whole whole lot of caffeine right there. That's a whole lot of caffeine right there. Um that has just risk written all over it for me. So if we look at this is a this is a graph where we see the milligrams of caffeine over here on our y axis. We see the ages of people. Note that the age of new onset caffeine use is as early as 2 years old. That's crazy. And I mean and think about it, what 11-year-old hasn't had caffeine? Right? Every single 11 year old has had caffeine at some point, probably in their lives. Okay. So, what we see here is these bars indicate what percentile they're in. So, are they in the 10th percentile where they're just like really not using it? Like 90, 90 out of 100 people, 90 people use more caffeine than these peeves. Or are they in like the 75th percentile where only 25% of people use more caffeine than them, right? So look at our, our 50 to 59 year olds. We see that people are using over 500 milligrams and between 40 and 49, we're also approaching uh, 500 milligrams throughout our 30s and our 40s. We are maximizing the amount of caffeine that we are using in life. So what we see here is that we ramp up on our caffeine usage throughout our lives. And once we kind of reach this threshold of this maximum daily dose, we become very, very used to it very, very quickly. Like once you get to this maximum threshold, it becomes very hard to come off of caffeine after that point. And that is because caffeine is addictive, okay? So these are usual caffeine intakes, data between 2007, 2010. And again, the take home message is once you ramp up to that 400 milligram a day dose, people tend to maintain it throughout the rest mm -hmm. of their lives. And here's the thing too, there's this trend, believe it or not, we're not the worst we've ever been in history. Back in 1946, Americans drank twice as much coffee as we do today which is kind of crazy to think about. You would think that we're drinking more and more caffeine these days than ever in the past. But here is what has changed. Energy drink consumption is what has changed. So this is growth um, in U.S. sales. On so on our on our x-axis we see our dates, and then on our y-axis we see the percentage change. Right. So you go, 
oh no, we're drinking, you know, we're doing pretty good. We're drinking half as much coffee as we did back in 1946, but we have seen an absolute explosion in the growth of energy drinks. So, I mean, you think about it. So if you're brand new or are here to just learn more about some of the science of Amari's products, I, I also want you to know a little bit about the company because we are very proud. Whoever invited you here today is extremely proud to be on the fastest growing team in Amari's history. And the company is up almost right at 100% year over year. So we're excited about that. That is monumentous growth year over year. And here we see the energy drink industry going up 500, 600%. And in just 12 short years has grown 5,000%. So yeah, we're drinking less coffee, but we're also drinking a ton more of these energy drinks, which I hope by the end of this presentation, you'll understand that there are some much better options than the standard energy drink on the grocery store shelf. So here's, so let's think about this. What does 400 milligrams of caffeine look like? Okay, one 10 hour energy shot has 422 milligrams of caffeine in two fluid ounces. Five hour energy, you're gonna have 200 milligrams. Getting, you know, really fancy coffee from a coffee house, you can get 180 milligrams. Personally, I think if you're going to drink caffeine, the best possible option is going to be green tea because green tea not only is relatively lower in caffeine, but it also contains some really powerful astringents that help to clean out the kidneys. They really help to, um, to tonify the body. They also contain um, ECGCs, these galactokinins, which are super powerful antioxidants that really help the body to stay healthy. Coffee as well has some antioxidants um, in it. I discourage the use of regular sodas, um, especially dark sodas can be particularly harmful for the bones. And so if you're going to consume caffeine, what if we looked for sources like matcha, like green tea, like some of these more organically occurring um, sources of caffeine. Black tea, I personally don't love the flavor of black tea, but I do, I still think that it's a better option than, you know, contemporary energy drinks and energy shots. And so this, this chart is adorable. It says a mainstream energy drink has 80 milligrams of caffeine. Yeah, you can get mainstream energy drinks these days with, with two to two to 320 milligrams uh, of caffeine. Absolutely. So um, yeah, Bobby, we're actually going to get into um, chocolate in a second um, because there are also a lot of compounds in foods and beverages that look like caffeine, behave like caffeine, but aren't caffeine, but kind of are, if that makes any sense at all. But we're going to get around to that in a moment. It's just your body can actually make caffeine because the molecular structure, which I showed you at the very beginning, is very, it is, it's, it's a very generic molecule. So that means that the body can break it down into multiple chemical constituents very, very easily. It's not a complex molecule. So now let's move on and talk about addiction because ooh, 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 I ticked somebody off today on social media because I was saying that like, look, it's not just it's not just nicotine and alcohol and cocaine and amphetamines, et cetera, that could be addictive. Caffeine is outright addictive and the jury is still out, but I can make a pretty good argument that mega doses of vitamins are also powerfully, powerfully addictive because have you ever talked to somebody who's like, if I don't get my B12 shot every three days, I feel like crap. And it's like, well, honey, do you have pernicious anemia? And they're like, no, 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 I don't have any anemia, but I still just, I have to have the shot. 
okay, all right, I've heard. And so what is an addiction? So an addiction is a chronic dysfunction of the brain. And what happens is there are different areas in the brain that are triggered when we are motivated by something or when we are rewarded by something. Um, and we also have the memory of how it felt while on the caffeine, on the nicotine, on the alcohol, all the things. So this is the reward center of the brain gone haywire. And it's about when your body craves a substance or craves a behavior, when it begins to cause compulsive or obsessive pursuit of the reward without regard over the consequences. Okay. So the best way, that's a really long way of saying it. The best way I have ever heard it described is where you have a repeated behavior despite negative consequences. Because I think that that not only extends to substance addiction, but it also extends to relationship addictions, codependencies on other people where, you know, you're you're picking up you're you're picking up the mess and doing this repeated behavior despite having negative consequences. So that is addiction. And what we see is this 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 change in what's called the dopamine reward pathway. So you have all of these of these areas of the brain where we have reward, pleasure, euphoria, um, our motor functioning, depending on the drug, can become exceptionally good as if you were using amphetamines or methamphetamines or even cocaine, even crack cocaine can do wonders for like fine motor, fine motor coordination in really tiny doses. On the opposite end of that, you have your your alcohol, which discoordinates motor functions, right? This is where compulsion comes in, is all these dopamine pathways talking to the prefrontal cortex saying, hey, you felt so good the last time that you did this. You, I mean, like, come on, dude, go, go compulsively get this, even though it has negative consequences. Then we have the serotonin pathways that go awry, okay? And this is where we get irritable, right? We start to have those withdrawal symptoms. We have the problems with our memory processing. This is where sleep becomes an issue and where our cognition goes either one way or another. So if you're on like a, a methylphenidate, a Ritalin, your cognition might improve, right? Um, if you're on caffeine, your cognition might improve. Um, and those are all governed by your serotonin pathways. Um, and so this is called the dopamine reward pathway, but we also need to be sure that we are acknowledging the serotonin pathways because many times, Let's say that you or someone you know has been taking absolute mega doses of caffeine for a long time, right? And they go through the couple of days of like true caffeine withdrawal. But then what happens is you start saying like, hey, I've got these amazing Amare products that are going to help with your dopamine. It's going to help with your serotonin. It's going to help with your energy levels, your mood, your this, your that. What's happened is you've burned out this dopamine pathway and you have burned out the serotonin pathway. So my advice to you might actually be surprising here. If you know somebody who maybe they're starting on happy juice, but they've been using 400, 500, 600, 800 milligrams of caffeine for years and years. And they just go, this happy juice crap. I mean, I'm not feeling anything. I don't know what you're talking about, having more energy and feeling like you want to get out of bed and that your memory's better. It's because the serotonin and the dopamine has all been depleted and your gut needs a fighting chance to catch up on the dopamine and serotonin production. So believe it or not, you might be able to help 
facilitate and speed up this process by recommending two products. The first one is the Vita GBX because when we depleted, when we have been using mega doses of, of caffeine and things, we have depleted our micronutrients, right? Caffeine is a diuretic, which means you're gonna be peeing out lots of sodium. You're gonna be peeing out your potassiums, et cetera. The second product that might be very useful in this situation is GBX protein because GBX protein contains a complete panel of amino acids and amino acids are precursors for serotonin and dopamine. So if we're going to use supplements, let's at least give them a fighting chance to all work together. So if you are someone who is like, I've been taking mega doses of B12, huge doses of taurine, you know, so much guarana, I can't even keep track. And now I just am kind of blah, I don't really feel anything, you may need to restore your micro minerals and your micronutrients as well as your amino acids. So now we get to caffeine withdrawal, which is where we get into difficulty concentrating, fatigue, headaches. I mean, how many of you have had a caffeine withdrawal headache? Goodness knows I have. Um, it can block up your sinuses, can cause irritability, um, chills and hot flashes both excessive use of caffeine as well as caffeine withdrawal can cause hot flashes. Um, and then the withdrawal specifically can cause some chills as well. We also see massive amounts of, of constipation alongside when we stop using um, caffeine. So Greg, I would love to chat with you a little bit as, um, and I just want to hear a little bit about your story of, you know, just lay it on us. You know, when you came into Amare, what was life looking like for you? Oh, wow. Well, let's go back before, way before then. So for years, I was just with a friend. Um, today, we were talking about some memories and I grew up on caffeine. Like, we're talking, you said caffeine as young as 11. No, like I was six, seven, eight years old when I was introduced to Diet Pepsi. Like I grew up on diet sodas and that was that was a love language of our family. So it just over time, right? Like I know for when you talk about withdrawals, diet sodas were a thing. Like if I was going into a stressful situation, had to have my Diet Coke, had to have like just that thing that was going to just help me get through whatever the next, uh, phase was. Fast forward a lot of years. Um, for the last, I'd say, decade of my life, I have been at a minimum in that 300 range, closer to 400 um, on a daily basis. And then in the last two and a half years, uh, up to this last December 1st, um, I would start my day either with a, a extra a, a extra strength five hour energy shot. So that 200 milligrams, it was actually closer to a little over 300 just to start the day. Um, and then I transitioned for about, uh, about a year, uh, I would start my day with a bang energy soda. I would roll out of bed. And when I say roll, like it wasn't roll. It was, I would, I would, I would, I would literally roll. And then I would be like, okay, I can hobble my way to the, to the closet to change my clothes to then hobble my way down to the garage where I kept my soda. Um, cause you talked about compulsive behaviors. Um, unfortunately, like my wife knew I drank energy drinks and she knew I had some issues with caffeine, but I didn't share all the things and I would go out of my way daily to find the energy drink. I, I would go out of my way. I would leave the office. I would hide places. I would store caffeinated beverages in the car, like going to certain situations in life so that I knew I had my outlet. Like I knew if it got super, if I got super irritable, I could go take that edge off. Um, and and that may sound silly to some people, but that's what it was, right? Like that's what life was uh, for a long, long time. And so um, it got to the point uh, about this time last year, uh, over the, this month and a couple next months where uh, I was every single day, upwards of about 700 milligrams of caffeine daily, where I would be standing in an office and falling asleep, eyes wide open, um, because I just, I just, I had run out of that adrenaline boost, if you will, or to your point, my body was like, oh no, you're tired. So what did I have to do? I had to go find that energy replacement source. 
to tell my body I wasn't tired and I could keep going. And if I couldn't do that, I had to go find a place to go take a, a nap of some sort. But I was not in a clear headed space um, where I could actually live life and, and truly survive, like thrive. I was surviving, barely surviving. Uh, it was kind of how I would state that. You know, and what you're saying is um, part of the pathology of addiction. Um, I don't know how many of you have known somebody who's recovered from an addiction, but one of the things that you have to get to the core of is that you've been lying for a very long time and you've been lying by hiding things. And I'm a huge fan of Janine Roth's uh, work about food addiction. And one of the things that she talks about a lot, if you are someone who's addicted to, to food, you must aim to eat in full view of others. And if you're addicted to caffeine and you're hiding it, it's, it's that guilt, it's that shame that you feel that is the CAGE questionnaire. So the CAGE questionnaire um, helps to assess addiction. And so you can ask yourself this about, uh, about caffeine, you know, have you ever felt that you needed to cut back? Do you ever feel angry when people tell you that you drink too much caffeine? Do you ever feel guilty or were you like Greg and you wake up every morning and you hit that eye opener? You hit that eye opener. You know, everybody wakes up and they're like, I can't wait for my morning cup of coffee. But the fact of the matter is, is that you're in withdrawal. You're in caffeine withdrawal is what is happening. And so talk to us next about how your life has changed and, and take us back to the beginning of the journey, not just like, boom, here's where I am now. But what were like the incremental steps that you took along the way as you as you started healing? Sure. So I began my healing process before I ever met Amari. Uh, I knew I was in a bad place emotionally. I knew it was a bad place physically, but I started working on myself um, a couple of years back and really in earnest about this time last year. Um, but what I would do is I would, I would hit these peaks and valleys, right? Like I was up, I, I would do the emotional work. I would find myself, I would be in a really good place. And then something in life would happen or, um, you know, or just days would go by and I would just slowly decline or I would you know, have a precipitous drop. Either way, I was in peak and valley mode and I wasn't stabilizing. I wasn't able to find a rhythm. Um, I knew that I needed a change physically. I knew I needed to get healthier. And so I had put some massive goals out there. But no matter what, I was, my body was so broken. Um, hold on two seconds. Sure. Duty calls. What is happening? Is something very loud driving by? <laughs> yeah, well, there's a jet. There's a, I'm, I'm near uh, an Air Force base here in Utah. I, uh, I was with my friend earlier and pulled over and uh, enjoying the outdoors. But uh, anyway, near an Air Force base, and they decided to take off on a practice run. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so in the end, um, in those peaks and valleys, like I was discovering, okay, I need this, I need that. And I started building a plan and incrementally implementing that plan. But my body was so broken honestly, and I didn't have energy that like physical activity, we all know how it hurts. If you've been sedentary, if you've been lacking, it hurts to get back into shape. It hurts to continue growing in shape. It hurts to continue to like become a better you, a better version of you, a healthier version of you. And, and sometimes that hurt is good. And sometimes that hurt really does hurt. Um, but no matter what I was doing, I wasn't responding. And I was getting really frustrated with the, the, the constant ebb and flow and the peaks and valleys. And so um, uh, Sarah Bjorgard um, and I had worked together and she said, hey, I've been taking these products. And she talked to me about uh, what it had done for her family and knowing her family's story and history. I was like, done. Like, I don't, you don't need to say less. Like, I'm in. Uh, I, I'll, I'll give it a try. I'll give anything a try. If it's going to help me figure this out, if it's going to help me turn a corner because nothing I was doing was turning that corner. So... Um, I received my Amari products, uh, back around the Thanksgiving time last year. And I held off on taking them. I wanted to get through what I didn't want to do was start this like health journey and then diminish it with Thanksgiving, right? Like it was just like mentally, I just had to have a fresh start. So I had waited till December 1st. Um, and I remember specifically going on a run the Saturday after last Thanksgiving, and I should say, I, I need to caveat this, Lindsay, and say it wasn't a run. Like, I tried to run, and I was jogging. I was walking. I was, like, it wasn't who I knew I could be, 
Um, wow, they're close. Hold on. Oh, there we go. Um, it wasn't who I knew I could be. I mean, 10 years ago, I crossed the line of an Ironman. Mm-hmm. Um, eight years ago, I crossed the line of a 50 mile ultra uh, trail run here in Utah, right? Like I've done really cool things, but three years ago, I was on the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro. It's not that I can't do athletic things, but I couldn't run a 5k. I couldn't run to our HOA pool house and back. I had to run a quarter mile, walk a quarter mile, hobble another quarter. Like it was painful and it was embarrassing. So when I finally opened up the reboot kit, which comes with every happy juice pack, I looked at what I had to do and it said no caffeine. And I knew I was in trouble. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, well, I guess we're just going to figure this out. But I was like, I'm not going to not, I'm not going to worry about it. I'll just stop on that day and figure this out. So December 1st comes. And I followed the reboot protocol. November 30th was my last energy drink. And I didn't know that was going to be the case. I was just going to follow the protocol. Um, December 1st, I woke up, followed the protocol of the reboot, which reboot is a three-day cleanse. For those who don't know, it's 12 capsicles. 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 <laughs> 12 capsicles. <laughs> it's, 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 it's 12 capsules, um, a very specific uh, prescribed volume of water that you consume daily based on your, on your body weight. And then dietary recommendations of these are the foods that you should be eating and these are the foods you should be avoiding. It's a, it's a very heavy vegan diet, right? Um, (laughs) Wow. If you don't. Sorry, go go ahead. All good. Okay. So a very vegan heavy diet and I was like, okay, I'm in. And I went day one, day two, day three, and day one, I was like, I don't know if we can do this, but I'm just going to work it through. And I pounded the water and I ate literally an entire vegetable tray and hummus for lunch. Like just, I had to consume something because my body was definitely saying, you need something, but like, you're not giving us what we need. So I just, I just kept eating, but I would consume the diet. Mm -hmm. And day two, I was like, huh, I'm feeling okay little bit of a headache, but not like I've uh, two years previous, I had tried to quit caffeine, um, cold Turkey. And I had flown to Uganda as part of that. Um, and just grateful that I had taken some caffeine with me because, uh, those chills and the body aches and everything you'd mentioned, it was debilitating, debilitating, mm. but this wasn't the case. And so I was like, huh, I woke up on day three, like I'm good. Okay. Let's finish this out. And all I was doing was the reboot and happy juice and happy juice with the dragon fruit, uh, non-caffeinated version. And I woke up day four that Friday, December 4th. I'm like, I'm a totally new person. Like I sprang out when I say like, I used to roll out like a hobble, right? You heard me that I sprang out of bed. I'm like, I can do this. Everything that I have in front of me now, I like, I felt like I had this windshield that had just been wiped clean, that like everything was in front of me and I'm like, who am I? I don't know when I felt like this before. I couldn't have told you when I had felt that free and clear and that clear of mind and, and energetic. Mm, and, I love it. and I haven't looked back. And so since then, in the incremental steps, what I've done is I've added a, a more regimented exercise routine. I've continued hydrating. I've added Vita GBX. I've added protein, a daily protein shake with our superfood and, um, and our seed fiber. I have added GBX fit, but like I've added pieces of the Amari puzzle to continue the, the overhaul of my broken gut system. And so now when I'm tired, I know why I'm tired. Now when I'm tired, I'm not reaching for more caffeine. I'm saying, am I thirsty? Have I eaten what I need to eat today? Am I stressed? Or is it just, I'm tired and really now I really should take an an afternoon nap or let's just go to bed at 8.30 tonight because you've got a big day ahead and you're just exhausted, right? Like I I can sense what I need because I'm not blunting anything. And it's, it's freed me up. And here I am eight months, nine months later, 35 pounds lighter, finished multiple triathlons this summer and have massive goals ahead of me. And again, haven't had an energy drink since November 30th. I love it. You are just giving people chills in, in the comments and everything. And so, you know, I, everybody give Greg a round of applause. Thank him for coming in and sharing his story with us today. Um, I want to finalize, finish up 
everything today um, by going through some other ingredients that are in some products that I just think, you know, if you are, if you're currently using some of these, uh, some of these ingredients just tend to be, they're all over the energy marketplace, and yet they're not always the safest of ingredients, okay? Um, so I see mega dosed vitamin B12 all of the time all of the time. I had someone yesterday send me a picture of their supplement routine and they were like, what is the, uh, what's your opinion on these? And I was like, you're taking, you're taking five milligrams, 5,000 micrograms of B12. And she's like, yeah, it was the only dose they had highest dose I've ever seen in my career. And so when we think about vitamin B12, great. Yeah. Prevents anemia. It's a healthy, helps support healthy pregnancies, helps to boost energy, but it can also cause many, many problems, including heart failure, liver failure, kidney failure, blood clots. And so we don't want to be taking these mega doses of vitamin B12. Another ingredient that I see a lot is guarana and guarana contains caffeine. And like Bobby was talking about earlier, how coffee or excuse me, um, chocolate contains caffeine. Chocolate actually doesn't contain caffeine. It contains an ingredient called theobromine that is then converted into caffeine. What's scary about guarana is it not only has straight up caffeine, but it also has theobromine, this precursor for caffeine, and it also contains theophylline, which is an old, very dangerous asthma drug that gets converted into caffeine. So inside of guarana, which you can find in mega, mega, mega doses in many a supplement, can be quite dangerous because you have three different sources of caffeine. Um, but you know what? people take it because it can help to improve energy but the side effects can include the insomnia the nervousness stomach upset and many many other side effects um taurine the taurine market has gone insane in the past 10 years one energy drink boosts your intake of taurine by somewhere between six to 16 times and combined with caffeine within the energy drinks you may also boost your blood pressure and your heart rate and taurine is particularly dangerous for teens because it may impact development. It may delay development in, in children and, and young teens. Let's just, can we talk about the sugar in there for a moment? Um, so Sharon, this is a question that comes up over and over again. And, you know, I, as your teacher, I want to teach you how to fish. And so anytime somebody goes like, how much vitamin D do I need in a day? How much B12 do I need in a day? How much B6? I want you to Google RDA, the recommended daily allowance of whatever vitamin or mineral that you're looking for. And then remember, if you have a supplement like Vita GBX, you will be able to see the percentage on the label. And so a lot of these energy drinks, you'll see like B12 and it'll have like 3000 times the recommended daily, um, the daily intake um, or a thousand times. That's what we're wanting to avoid. You know, we want to use our supplements to top up what's deficient in our diet, not to artificially inflate our, our response. Okay. So sugar, um, the average, the average can of, of energy drinks contains about 50 grams of sugar. 50 grams of sugar. Um, that's, that's a 16 ounce drink. And if you're not getting grams of sugar, then you're probably getting some sort of artificial sweeteners, the worst of which are the saccharins and the aspartames of the world. Um, kind of in the middle are the erythritols. If you can get some of the energy drinks that are, you know, sweetened with monk fruit or something or stevia, I, I also really like. I like xylitol. Some people don't, but I personally do. Um, and so this is a um, this is just a way that companies avoid using sugar outright 
But when you're using artificial sweeteners, it's still not necessarily safe, right? And then the last ingredient that I will really urge you to use some caution with is niacin or vitamin B3. So niacin is added in to beverages because it, you know, it can really help with your um with your cholesterol levels and it is just a b vitamin and people throw it in there with the rest of the b vitamins but if you've ever taken a niacin um gel cap you know that the flushing the dizziness the blood pressure the fatigue all of that can be very very real and so marcy why do some people get tired after they drink caffeine because their adrenals are tapped their adrenals are tapped. And so I am here today to share with you that there is a potential for you to try a better option. There is a better way out there. And I'm going to share my screen again. Let me know if you cannot see it in the chat. And so we are all here today because we love Amari's supplements. They have changed our lives for the better. I um, had been on a weight loss journey for about a year. When I first started with Amari, the biggest thing that I saw was just the reduction in the inflammation in my gut, the bloating, and I happened to lose a few pounds. I can't guarantee that everybody will, but I just started to notice like, I'm feeling better here. Like I'm feeling like, I can kind of do more, take on the world. Our, our chief science officer, his name is Dr. Sean Talbot. He has a degree in, in functional nutrition. And he says, you know, the whole point is we need to take you from languishing to thriving. So if you've been feeling blah or lackadaisical or got brain fog, don't want to get out of bed in the morning, struggling to whatever, today's your day to take a step towards changing your life because we know that you deserve to be healthy and that you deserve to feel better and you deserve to be able to show up for your spouse and your children and your friends as the best version of yourself and in order to do that you might need a little bit of help from some supplements as well as a community that's going to guide you along the way so here's what i want you to do if nothing else Today is the day to start with some happy juice. And all happy juice is, is it contains mentabiotics. Mentabiotics is a prebiotic, probiotic, phytobiotic powder. It contains three different strains of probiotics that are strain specific to help with mental wellness. So you may go like, all right, doc, but I already buy a probiotic from my grocery store. Well, here is the thing. The probiotic that's at your grocery store is not necessarily designed to specifically support mental wellness. These are, you can, you can select if you would like your mentabiotics in original, which contains um, three grams of sugar, or you can go with the sugar-free, which is sweetened with xylitol. I personally choose the sugar-free. You can then choose your flavor of edge. So just like caffeine is a noetropic drug that helps to support cognition, so too is EDGE. So EDGE contains three ingredients as well as some prebiotic fibers. And the EDGE is a, it's going to help with mental clarity. It's going to help with mental focus. It's going to help you with your motivation and your mood. And over time, the lychee fruit that's in here helps to reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles and burn belly fat. So there's all that piece of the equation too. You can choose your edge in either watermelon, which comes in a jar, or there is grape edge, which comes in a stick pack. If you are sensitive to xylitol, I encourage you to go with the grape instead of the watermelon. And as I mentioned, if you're sensitive to stevia, then you're gonna go with the original versus the sugar-free. You then get to pick, are you going to get a little bit of caffeine, 45 milligrams equivalent to a cup of green tea? 
in your energy plus energy plus comes in two flavors you got pomegranate lime and then you got dragon fruit the pomegranate lime has a little bit of sugar in it and the dragon fruit is sugar free and so you can pick either one the dragon fruit also is caffeine free so if you have been inspired by greg's story and you're like you know what i think i can kick the caffeine to the curb grab the grab the uh dragon fruit for you now what we're going to do next is consider what are your special needs this was a uh, this was something i was building for somebody else so let, let's just talk about what your special needs are right now okay when you check out i want you to take advantage of this custom bundle because the bundle is going to be the way to maximize your savings and if i invited you to this call today and you want to follow along with me at home go to lindsayelmore.com amare but don't follow that link if somebody else brought you to this call today ask them for their link but here's what i want you to think about you are able to select from all of these different products right if you are someone whose gut is very, very, very jacked, please do not check out without a digestive. If you are someone who has been very, very, very addicted to caffeine for a long time and you want to take advantage of adding in a protein as well as the Vita GBX, you may do that, right? you can also say i want to try these these edge flavors i want to try it in both flavors you can do that maybe you to and i do not get overwhelmed with this portion of the presentation the person who invited you here can help to answer any confusion that i am creating by just kind of showing you this big list of products i hope i'm being clear but we can take a few minutes to follow up in the chat so gbx fit if you're specifically interested in something to help with weight loss ignite for her or ignite for him if you're looking for a product that is going to help with sexual wellness and hormone balance i'm not going to go through every single product but i will highlight just a couple more um kids mood plus is arguably one of my favorite products in the entire product line if you are somebody who has been very stressed out for a very long time and would like a product that can really help to bring the chill back kids mood plus is a fantastic one if you're someone who fears that they've had some leaky gut omegas with some vita gbx maybe you're not sleeping well sleep plus maybe you got some minor aches and pains relief plus you have so many options here in this bundle so based on what i taught today i recommend digestive bundled with the salted caramel as my favorite protein powder you can go with chocolate or vanilla if that's your choice and then we'll have the vita gbx and when you add this to your cart be sure that you are also shopping the code that is only good for today right that's only good for today so be sure you apply this code so that you can save look at that we just saved 211 dollars off of this cart you are getting six products six products as well as your wellness partner membership fees waived for only 136 bucks you're getting mentabiotics edge energy plus digestive which is going to help with any kind of side effects that come up salted caramel protein powder which is going to give you those building blocks it's going to help you to build more serotonin and dopamine and then you have vita gbx which is going to help to replenish nutrients that have been lost over the years of simply not using your diet correctly plus you get the free reboot absolutely megan that's one of that's the seventh products so you're getting seven products for 136 bucks so 
I will take some time. I'm going to stop recording. Everyone, my name is Dr. Lindsay Elmore. You can find me at lindsayelmore.com and you can find educational resources that I provide at learnamari.com. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week. I will be speaking with child behavioral specialist um, Bobby Decker. We're going to be answering questions like, what are three ways you can talk to your child if they're having a meltdown? What have been some effective ways to help children focus better on homework? We're going to be talking, we're, we're just going to be basically doing a check-in. Like we've been back in school for, um, for a month. How are things going? So I'm going to stop recording and I will be happy to answer questions for the next two or three minutes. Thank you all. We will see you all same time, same place, Thursday, 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. The link is always learnamari.com slash science class.